Thank you very much for having me uh, late in the evening. I didn't have a chance to uh, listen to your uh, the discussion during the day, but uh, I think it was very important for, for me to uh, listen to um, what Commissioner Ando had to tell us um, today. Um, and Commissioner, I would, I would say first of all that there are many things in your intervention that the uh, ETUC could uh, agree with. When you say that uh, labor should not be a, a variable but a source of recovery, when you say that we should invest in non-cost factors, uh, when you say that job will not emerge by themselves, when you push for use guarantee and for some system for restructuring, case of restructuring, when you speak of uh, safe workplaces and the need to have safe workplaces, when you speak about taxes and the problem we have with tax competition, when you say that uh, work should be more participative, um, all that for us is something that we could support. But as you know, I'm sure, because you are meeting other types of commissioner, <laughs> this is not the policy that is being carried. And this is not the policies which are being carried within the economic governance that we are experiencing in Europe nowadays. And that is basically the very big difficulty that the ETUC is having um, in this period of time. And to make that a bit more concrete, we are now uh, faced with the conclusions of the Council of December which says that a roadmap should be worked out, and this roadmap will concern um, the individual contract with uh, countries and with the possibility they could have to be financed. Uh, and it will also uh, touch on the uh, social dimension of the, uh, of the EMU and social dialogue. But all the social dimension of, uh, the so of the EMU, it's the EMU, not the EU, and I will come back to that, all this uh, social dimension is sort of prisoner of a more global uh, and more general economic governance policy. And the ETUC will, on the 7th of uh, February, have a, an informal meeting about what we have to say about the social dimension of the uh, EU and EMU. Uh, and we will certainly very actively contribute to that uh, roadmap. But the, there is one thing I am sure of, is that if we continue with the same economic governance as the one that we are having today, the ideas that you want to push, and we thank you for that, are not going to come through. And we know that a social dimension for us, for Europe, cannot be just sticking a plaster on a bad leg or a broken leg. It has to be a lot more. It has to be something which is part and parcel of a different economic governance. So I would really urge you uh, to do as much as you can to try and convince uh, the commissioners around and policymakers and uh, whoever you can convince that the social cohesion and social progress for Europe that we are all advocating will not be achieved with the current uh, policies. I hear you, but I hear also other politicians and, and leaders to say they want to defend the European social model. But I never see, the, I never see really how they are doing it. Um, and for us, 
the ideas that you are, have put forward in your in your intervention today are ideas that uh, we want to we want to support, but they are certainly part and parcel of different policies. You know very well that the ETUC has accepted to participate tomorrow in a meeting. I'm not going to say on the monitoring of wages, because this is not what we want it to be, but a meeting on wages. And uh, you know very well that this is a very sensitive uh, point for ETUC and ETUC affiliates. Um, and it's a sensitive point because what we want to show is that wages are not an enemy to the recovery, but a motor of the recovery and a source of uh, and a source of growth. But we are also wanting to say that wages are for the national level to decide and that we are opposed, and I, I arrived in the room when I think my Portuguese friend was uh, speaking and saying that intervention in the wage setting systems was just something that we could not support. And what we have now uh, at European level in terms of wages is exactly indirect but very forceful intervention on the wage system. So we will participate in the meeting tomorrow, but with the view to say two things. To say, first of all, that we are not there to consider the wages in individual countries. This is not our job. This is not what the ETUC is, is there for. We will be there to show how the, some of the imbalances in Europe have to be compensated in the, in the future. And also to show that the inequality in wages are not um, a, a good angle, are, are bad, let's say, to be more direct, are bad for European uh, recovery and to get out of this uh, crisis. Um, I'm, I'm being quite strong on this uh, issue because um, my message to you is clearly this is a very sensitive question for uh, all of us and we do not want to be embarked on something that would lead us to um, intervene on the national industrial relation uh, and wage systems. But this being said, we have a job to perform when finance ministers, when employment ministers are dealing with wages, ETUC has something to say on that and we will be, we will be saying it. So my encouragement, Commissioner, is to be very practical. Let's have a strong work programme on a safe workplace. Let's have a legislation on restructuring. Let's have some concrete movement on, if not harmonization of taxes, if this is too complicated on a, for the legal basis, but benchmarking by the examples of what's happening uh, in Europe because of tax competition. I was just made uh, aware very strongly by some people of what's happening uh, in France between companies, one uh, Amazon, not to name it, uh, being able to uh, avoid uh, taxation and the other one uh, being now nearly bankrupt and having to, uh, uh, to sack people because it is paying, um, it is paying taxes and that made a difference of several uh, million euros for the company. Now, this is not the type of Europe that we can support. And I think that the Commission, even if it doesn't have the, the authority to uh, harmonise taxes, could be a lot more proactive in, um, um, in putting forward the need for a benchmark 
on, on these uh, issues. I will finish by saying we will certainly um, look with the greatest attention the, um, your proposal on social investment. Uh, social investment is uh, for us uh, very important, but where is the money coming from? Can the people, uh, the, the countries wanting to invest in, in social things, uh, are they going to in increase their public deficit? Are they going to increase their debt? And, and therefore, can the Commission do something to lift uh, the, the cost of social investment from the, uh, uh, the, the public, from public deficit? And uh, finally, I will say a few words on the south and the periphery. I don't like the word periphery. I think no European country is in the periphery. They are just suffering uh, more than others uh, currently, but using this word is making them appear as uh, second to the class. And this is not the way we are looking at them. What we are looking, uh, what we are seeing is rather um, a system which is currently um, making these countries not free trade zones yet, but very weak in terms of social protection, in terms of uh, uh, industrial relation, and making them uh, attractive, more attractive for these reasons. And therefore, it's, it's what we call a downward social spiral. And we don't want them to uh, go through that and we don't think it's good for them, but we don't think it's good for other more solid countries because we know this is exactly what we call uh, social dumping. So, Commissioner, thank you for your insight. Uh, thank you for the suggestions you are making. We're going to continue to work together. We will be critical, as we have always been, but uh, critical and constructive. But I think our main point is how can we convince uh, the Commission and the EU in general that the policies, the economic governance policy that is being carried has to change. Thank you very much.